Donna Ritter. I'm the executive director of the Educators Consortium. We are now in incredibly year 27. So we are a network and a link for all of you who are trying to engage in service learning in meaningful ways and grow it on your campuses. I cannot get over how much it's grown in 27 years and the fact that we now have students participating that we can learn from um, is just really a testament to everybody's participation and where this has gone and uh, and how farther how much further we can take it so i am i'm not going to take time today because there's just too much exciting things ahead for everybody so i have the greatest greatest pleasure and before i have the greatest pleasure i really want to thank marissa and the team who pulled this together which is kim and wendy um or from milken and carolyn cameras from milken and emma uh, Lemke, who you'll be meeting. So with that, now I have the greatest pleasure of introducing Kim Cavallo, who is the director of uh, Unplugged, uh, executive director of Unplugged Collaborative. So Kim. Yes, thank you. Well, thank you everyone and welcome. Um, I'm been tasked, I think we're, I'm gonna talk a little bit about more about myself and the organization and the awareness campaign, National Day of Unplugging in a little bit, but as a kind of way to set intentions and ground ourselves for this uh, next hour we're gonna spend together um, in, in the spirit of digital wellness and wanting to um, you know be able to use technology in all its power for good. Um, and that includes taking care of ourselves. Um, we're just going to do a little check your tech neck. Um, it's just a little something that I like to do before and during while I'm using my computer. I'm not always that great at it. Um, but when you're sitting at your computer, which many of us, all of us probably are doing a lot of hours during the day, um, there's a lot of time where you'll find yourself slowly, you know, shoulders slouched, head going down, looking at things. And if you notice your breath will get shorter and you'll have uh, less room to take in deep full breaths, which is really what helps us stay um, you know, in an, in an upbeat mood. It's hard to feel upbeat or hopeful when you're lacking oxygen. Um, so let's all just sit where we are. Um, you wanna feel whether you're on a chair or you're um, you know, hopefully either sitting on the floor. I always like to sit in my chair kind of cross-legged just so I can keep my hips open. But either way, you wanna feel wherever you're sitting that you're grounded, that the sitting bones are pressing into the chair or the floor, the couch, um, and that you just start noticing, and this is just a body scan. Um, are they pressing evenly? Is there um, even pressure on one side or the other, um, right to left? Is there pressure more in the front or the back? Um, and just more and more get some grounding and start feeling your spine lifting up and then notice the chest and if your shoulders are rolling forward and then just slowly take a deep breath in and open the chest, let the neck elongate, feel your throat soften your facial muscles relax. And then just take a moment to take a few breaths with your eyes closed or without. And one of the things that I like to do um, during the day that when I find myself, you know, starting to get shrunken up again is to do a little twist in the chair. Um, and so I'll either turn around and just kind of put my elbow on the back of my chair and just, you know, move your chest to look one direction. And this is where the, the grounding of your sitting bones is really helpful. Press down into those sitting bones, lift your spine up, inhale, lift your chest and exhale, turn. And do a few rounds of that. Inhale, lift, exhale, turn in your own time. And then when you're ready, you can exhale and release and just do the other side. Again, inhale, lift up your chest away from your hips, making more and more space in your torso. And then exhale, release any tension. Turn away from your screen. And then exhale, release. And then you can just take a little, a moment just to kind of make your stretch the sides of your neck. So taking your hand onto either your ear or the side of your head. Again, not, not kind of shrinking over because that's not help, gonna get the stretch going. You wanna keep your spine elongated. Just get that little stretch on the side of your neck. 
Take a few breaths here. And release and do the other side. And then release and then the last one, just take your hands behind your neck. Again, lifting your chest up towards your chin and just slowly let your elbows kind of get heavy. And again, you just wanna notice that you're not just going down like this and pulling your whole body down. You're letting your spine be long and your elbows be heavy and just the back of your neck gets a nice long stretch. And then take a breath in and release any tension. And that's a little bit of check your tech neck. So thank you, Kim. Sure. That was a great way to dive in. And we're here today, all things tech related, including our necks. Um, and what we're looking at is uh, just the intersection of digital wellness and um, and service learning. And um, one thing that we know about service learning practices is that we have to start with investigation. And so we wanted to give you an opportunity um, to be in that space as we explore. And often um, we wanna start with a student-centered approach to that. So we're gonna start right here with our own personal experiences with digital wellness. I'm going to um, share my screen. And what I'm putting up here now is um, something called the, uh, emotion sensation wheel. And because we know that with digital wellness, that um, it doesn't always necessarily just exist digitally, it exists um, in our with our emotions and with ourselves physically. And so um, this is something that might be a great way to explore with your students the personal connections that they have to digital wellness, because as you begin to uncover their connections to it and how they relate to it, that might be the spark that they have as to what they want to do um, within that space, within that issue and that cause. Um, so I wanted to give you a moment to look at the emotion sensation wheel and think about a digital technological experience that you've had lately and share the emotion sensation that came with that experience in the chat. So it might have been listening to city officials give their latest COVID briefing and you might have been on sort of like the fear, anxious, fidgety spectrum, or maybe it was being at the inauguration, listening to Amanda Gorman, and you're on, um, you know, the happy, joyous, open um, emotion sensation. So we want to invite you to think about some experience you've had with um, technology lately and share that in the chat. And Donna, as they come up, maybe you can share out a few that, you're, that we're seeing. Hey, looking forward to hearing from you guys. Um, Aaron has a lot of anxiety, which I think almost all of us share. You turn on the news, oh my God. Um, and, and Hallie, student led uh, every town for gun safety. Assembly yesterday was excited, she was excited and inspired. Kim, in a family group text, I felt happy, joy, and warm in seeing the photo of my sister's new baby, Emma Jean. Um, I got irritated when I tried math equations in Google and the formatting doesn't work. So those are just a few examples of how we experience life digitally now and how it is connected to our emotions and um, our physicality. And so we wanted to offer that as as something that you might a takeaway that you might be able to use with students to begin that conversation about digital wellness and what it really how it really sits with them and what you might uncover in that space. Um, and a second step of investigation that we often do is then to keep it student centered is to look at um, what what is what does digital wellness even even mean and not just from a definition that we give to students but how 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 would they define it how would they construct it so um, this you may have seen in other ECSL workshops where we we take 
um, a concept and we break it down, we deconstruct it to then let students construct it themselves. So you could take um, a T-chart and put digital and wellness on each side and come up with terms under the word digital and terms under the word, the word wellness and use those um, concepts to bridge together and come up with a definition for digital wellness with maybe an accompanying image for those students that are more visual, just give them an opportunity to construct what digital wellness means to them. Um, and so today we're gonna, we're gonna go a little bit further into the investigation stage. And we're also, one other way to do that is to hear from experts and to do interviewing. Um, and so today we have a few people that are in this space of digital wellness that we're really excited to hear from that can share some insights um, as to what, what can happen um, within when we would want to adopt digital wellness as a service learning initiative. And we're really excited to hear from Kim Cavallo and Emma Lembeck. And um, thank you so much for being here. And um, also from students and service coordinators at Milken School. We will be hearing about some, some concepts of where you can go with digital wellness and how um, it might transfer then in our breakout rooms, we can talk about how it'll translate into our own campus and classroom and curriculum. So thank you, Kim, so much for sharing your insights today. Thank you. Um, so let's see, just want to make sure I'm, I'm looking at all the faces. Um, so again, thank you for having me here. Um, Kim Cavallo, I'm executive director of the Unplug Collaborative, which is a new nonprofit that just formed this year. And it formed so that we could take over the awareness campaign, National Day of Unplugging, which has been in existence since 2009. And for those of you who are not familiar with National Day of Unplugging, it started in 2009 as a series of small um, tech-free dinners in the San Francisco Bay Area, a bunch of tech executives decided and kind of were forward thinking in the idea that we needed to have life tech balance. It was a conversation that a lot of people weren't having at the time. Um, and uh, they basically had those, those dinners and then it just grew from there. Um, the organization that prior to um, us taking over National Day of Unplugging was an organization called Reboot, which is a Jewish arts and culture nonprofit. And they um, loved the awareness campaign, but they had many other programs that they were working on um, in for their mandate for their organization, and they were looking for someone to take over. Um, I have been in the digital wellness space now for three years. I started uh, plainly because I was having my own issues with it. Um, I'm a longtime yoga, yoga student and found myself in the bathroom of a yoga studio, instead of being in class, I was checking my texts and answering emails. Um, and it just showed me kind of the power of mobile technology and how it follows you everywhere. And there's just no getting away from it. And I figured if I had this problem, others were probably were experiencing it too. Um, and so at the time I had come off of, uh, you know, a 25 years of doing nonprofit fundraising and community building and event planning. And I just thought, what could I add to that space? Um, so I started Little Space. Um, basically, I wanted to get a little space. So I called the company Little Space and I thought, where could I add value? Well, I wanted to bring in the nonprofit social impact aspect that I had become familiar with. And so we developed something called Unplug for a Cause. Um, and uh, we have a timer that basically allows um, anyone to mark the amount, count the minutes that they're unplugged. And you use those minutes to support causes in a couple of different ways. So your community would take the unplug for a cause challenge. Uh, and that could be a school, it could be, um, uh, you know, a church or um, any, any community. And basically you take on this challenge and use the app to count the minutes. And last year for National Day of Unplugging, we counted minutes and partnered um, with a sock company. And we let socks, the minutes that you unplugged turned into socks that were donated to homeless shelters. Um, and it was really amazing to see the thousands and thousands of minutes that were being counted uh, unplugged and that those minutes turned into um, socks for people living in homeless shelters. So you get the feeling of having an impact on your community um, and at the same time you're taking care of yourself and your own relationship with technology and learning new habits. Um, and 
you know, so these are two organizations that I run, Little Space and National Day of Unplugging. And you think, okay, so now we're in the pandemic and all we can do is uh, be on screens and that's our only way of having human connection. Um, so why are you telling me to unplug? Um, and this is something that obviously is a question we get asked. And the, the first answer is it's not uh, all or nothing. Um, this, these are um, days, the National Day of Unplugging is a day that we reflect on our relationship with technology. So there's no shame involved. Um, there's no reason to um, you know, look at your time that you're spending and feel like, oh, I should be doing this, I should be doing that. Um, one of the sayings we, we like, it's not something we created ourselves, but uh, don't should on yourself. You know, like, shouldn't, like you shouldn't be doing this or that. You should definitely look at your um, interactions with technology and think about how you can, um, you know, what your awareness is of it. And so it really starts with just like good nutrition. It starts with, um, you know, good habits with your consumption of technology and this idea that there is a hierarchy, just like there's a hierarchy of healthy foods versus um, not as healthy foods. Um, and if you're looking for a snack, if you go for an apple versus a bag of chips, your, your body's gonna feel different. And so similarly to uh, you know, taking in technology, um, and I'm speaking mostly now of recreational time, obviously we all work now on our screens, we're in school on our screens. Those are times that we can't control. Um, but when you get off of those, those work hours or those school hours, what are you doing with your time? And if you're still wanting to socialize using technology, because that's really what we're limited to a lot of us right now, especially in different parts of the country where they're not able to just get outside and sit and visit with friends in the outdoors. Um, you know, you want to think about uh, the difference between taking FaceTime with a friend versus scrolling mindlessly by yourself in your room on, on Instagram, because there is that element of, you know, the comparison culture of, of social media can get you down um, at, at any age. I mean, especially for young people, but I would say any age. I know that for myself, I'm going on social media and, and looking and thinking, oh, wow, they, you know, they got to see their, their parent and I'm not seeing my parent. Maybe I'm not seeing my parent as much as I should. Um, you know, it just really breeds that kind of thought process, um, unless you're really super conscious of it. Um, so just being able to be conscious of your um, digital diet. Um, and these are things that um, if many of you may have access to digital citizen curriculum, or there's curriculum that, that is in schools that talk about um, these subjects. Um, at National Day of Unplugging and Unplug Collaborative, we are a resource center for that. So we don't create our own um, tools. We like to highlight tools that other people have created. Um, and so National Day of Unplugging is really this opportunity um, to celebrate human connection over digital engagement. Um, and what we do on our website, and this is really a born out of, uh, you know, a pivot in, of necessity from the pandemic, is instead of encouraging people to gather in person, which is what National Day of Unplugging always was, you know, that people would gather together in parks and they would have um, rent out restaurants and have concerts and all of these things in celebration of National Day of Unplugging, this year we couldn't encourage people to do that. So we came up with 50 plus ideas of what to do on National Day of Unplugging. And it's a growing list, you can access it on our website and it's got all kinds of ideas from, um, you know, hikes, uh, finding out whether your city has secret stairs, um, doing things that bring you joy and an element of the unexpected or surprise because when you're competing with technology and you're competing with the software developers who have created these technologies and the applications, they know um, behavioral psychology. They know what keeps you gripped. They are using sounds and buttons and links and ways of keeping you engaged. And so that element of surprise, um, which people who are a lot smarter than I am can speak about in terms of the dopamine hits and the parts of the brain that are ignited, um, those things, if you can bring them into real life experiences, um, so for example, with younger children, one of the activities that we encourage people to do, and we're even having a contest for National Day of Unplugging is fort building. So take out the bed sheets, take out the blankets, get the big fort going. And you know, 
maybe add in a daily element of surprise so that there's something new in there every day for the week. Um, and that again is is kind of competing with the with video games because now you're taking you know a scavenger hunt. We're also doing we partnered with little free libraries, and these are all ideas you can see on our website. So we partner with little free libraries, and there's people coordinators all over the country, all over the world, really um, designing these scavenger hunts that are in partnership with the Nocturnals. Um, it's a book series and there's all kinds of clues that are being taped onto the little free libraries. And again, it's not something that we're encouraging people to do in big groups, but take your family and go find the clues of the, uh, on National Day of Unplugging. Um, yeah, and, and just other, other activities. The one last one I'll, I'll tell you a little bit about is one I'm really passionate about. It's called uh, Unplug and Crochet for a Cause. Uh, we've got this wonderful woman, London Kay, who is a yarn bomber. Uh, which basically means she does street art uh, with, with crocheting and yarn. And she has designed these welcome home signs. And this is something, again, that I think really plays into kind of social impact and uh, service learning because you can uh, learn how to crochet these welcome home signs. And then we're encouraging you to gift them to nonprofit organizations that help people transition out of homelessness. A couple of the organizations that we're partnering with are Covenant House, who help runaway teenagers uh, get stable home, uh, you know, or transition into stable um, homes, and uh, LA Family Housing, which is local to us. But there are a lot of organizations that help people transition out of homelessness. And it's just the idea that, that you've created with your hands while you're unplugged a welcome home sign that hopefully will hang in the room of a young teenager that's been, that has, you know, not had you know the the opportunities to launch their life the way that maybe a lot of our um, children or our students that are on this call have had the opportunity. Um, so yeah, those are those are the things that are going on. National Day of Unplugging is the first weekend of March. It's March March fifth to sixth. Although schools traditionally do things the Friday before or the whole week before, um, and I'm just you know, here to answer any questions about digital wellness and uh, any of National Day of Unplugging or Unplug for a Cause. Um, one of the great joys of being in this new emerging field um, of digital wellness is getting to work with young people who have um, taken on this movement as their own cause and have their um, own way of kind of in, uh, spreading the word about it and educating people and broadening their awareness. And I am so excited to introduce you to Emma Lemke, who is um, going to speak next about a movement that she created. Um, and it's helping people all around the world um, also deal with uh, their relationship with technology. Thank you so much. Um, so again, I'm Emma Lemke. I am a current high school senior from Birmingham, Alabama, and I am the CEO and co-founder of the Log Off Movement and a recovering social media addict. So going back, I got my first social media account and got really immersed in the digital world in about seventh grade. I got Instagram, that led to Snapchat, that led to even Gmail chat. Um, and I, I quickly became obsessed with being in the news and being um, always updated with constantly flowing feeds. Um, looking back, it was incredibly detrimental to my mental health. I have an anxiety disorder and OCD. And looking back again now, it was extremely triggering to be on platforms that have that never ending feed for someone like me. But I was unaware of the emotional manipulation that was happening, happening through these algorithms. So. I spent about four to five hours from seventh grade to about ninth grade on these social media apps. And I just began to become instilled with unex like unrealistic expectations for my life. And all of a sudden on one summer day in ninth grade, I had this really cathartic moment when I was, I'm also in this incubator at my school in Birmingham called the Myrie Ethical Leadership Center that just says, take an idea and turn it into something that will help your community, very open-ended. And I was struggling to find something that would really adapt well to that for me. And one day in the summer of ninth grade, I heard my phone buzz and I just had that Pallovian response to grab for it. And all it took was one question. I finally asked myself as I reached my subconscious breaking point, why on earth am I responding this way to all of my digital notifications? 
And how does it have this overwhelming control over me? And why do I feel the need to stay on something that's hurting me? So very quickly, if people that know me, I'm a huge researcher. I descended into the world of Google and Wikipedia and Pew Research Center. And I found all of the negative impacts that social media could cause on my mental health. And just the fact that algorithms were put in place where I was an unwilling, um, just victim of emotional manipulation with all the other people in my generation. So I quickly began and I did all of that research, but I found that there really wasn't a space available for teens to just have a conversation about the multifaceted nature of social media, because I felt like I constantly was being told by older generations that it was just something that you had to cut out completely. It was a cold turkey diet. If you don't like it, get off it. But I think that people in my generation really know how social media can be this wonderful medium for self-expression and to connect people from around the globe. So I wanted to create that space and Log Off came to my head and that was my, my re-project and something that I co-founded with my other friends and I'm the CEO of now. Basically, it is just a movement dedicated to rethinking social media by teens for teens. Um, we have, um, we, we launched this past July during COVID. We kind of capitalized on the time that everyone was spending at home. And the fact that for the first time, really, people were beginning to feel fatigued with social media and the digital world because they were having to be immersed in it more often than they wanted to be. So we launched in July. And we, we had a blog, we had an idea for a character ed curriculum, we had just um, put up applications for a teen leadership council. Fast forward to today, I don't know how, but we have about 45 members from over 16 different countries. We've been viewed in over 90 countries. Um, we have about um, 9,000 people coming to our website so far. Um, and it's just been absolutely unbelievable to see how many people care about this issue, specifically teens. So um, breaking it down, we have our well-being initiative. We have a developing female empowerment, LGBTQ+. We have our writers group, our teen leadership council that does more of the administrative onboarding. Um, and then we're currently developing a character ed. We have a podcast. The list goes on. Um, and that's partially due to the fact that when we launched Log Off, I did a ton of outreach work and I thought that we would hopefully get to Mississippi, um, that people would care and apply from the southern states and the second application we got was from the Philippines. So it was just this unbelievable moment when I realized that addiction and social media addiction and just coming to terms with okay social media and the digital world can cause negative effects, but we want to change that. We want to learn how to have a digital well-being, learn how to have a digital balance, learn how to put parameters on our times within social media so that we can actually turn that parasitic relationship into a mutualistic one. So we've done a lot of work there. I've connected with teams from around the globe and now all of y'all, which is wonderful. Um, and I, I think going into the future, we just want to continue, continue to expand that space. We want to continue to provide a platform for teens to come to us to voice like their opinions, to have a conversation in a productive manner about having fatigue or about loving social media, but not liking certain parts. Um, and we want to just add a more diverse set um, of people into our community. And, um, we, you know, going out, um, we, we really want to take on an educational role because we know how pivotal and integral it is to incorporating this conversation about digital well-being and balance into the educational system. So we're currently developing a character ed curriculum right now. Um, we're looking for feedback from educators and administrators around the world. Um, so that's where a lot of um, teachers and parents have come into play and helped us develop this. And if anyone is interested in that, um, we have a, a section on the website, but also for teens to get involved, we have a take action page on our website where people can become writers. We have wonderful monthly writing pieces. Um, and we varying from, we just had an interview from um, a person who had gotten sex trafficked because of social media, all the way to just how to have a conversation with your kids about social media. So we have a wide a range of different topics. And then we have our team leadership council where people can get involved in initiatives or can speak on a discussion series on YouTube. So I really thank you all for allowing me to be here. Um, log off is something that I'm extremely passionate about, obviously. Um, and it's just, it's very, it makes me very happy to know that educators really want to get involved in having this conversation so that younger generations can begin to become more equipped with the tools and the conversations to exist in a healthier way on social media. Thank you so much, Emma. It's really, I really connected with, um, 
just how you basically embraced and we're here as service learning educators and you basically embraced the entire process of service learning um, from that spark of what you wanted your initiative to be through the research and the investigation and all of that all the way through the action so um, it's really inspiring to hear a student driven example of that and how you've spearheaded it with other with other peers um, and so we're gonna we're gonna hear now from um, students and teachers at Milken that have brought that kind of initiative to their own school. Um, and so we hope that that will also give us um, some spark as we head into our breakout rooms about where we can take some of the ideas that we've heard here um, and, and put it and apply it to um, where we are um, in our own spaces of service learning. So um, I'm gonna turn it over to Carolyn now and, um, and Wendy. Okay, can everybody see the shared screen? Some mm -hmm. thumbs up. Great, okay, go ahead, Wendy. Um, I'm Wendy Ordner. I'm the Director of Service Learning with Carolyn Chambers, who's the Assistant Director, and she is also the Director of Yosma. and five of our Yosma leadership st students are here today. And so we're just going on the heels here. Um, incredible, Emma, just incredible. And we agree with you, Kim, like working with the students is like what it's about. Like they get it, they, they, they get it more than we do. Um, they understand it and they need it. Um, you know, they need the help. So uh, we are delighted to bring on our students here as well. Um, so uh, Kim already covered this. It was just, what is the national day? The only thing I'm going to say here is that it was no coincidence that it was chosen to be Friday sundown to Saturday sundown. Um, the original organization, um, was a Jewish organization. And so choosing like a Sabbath 24 hour, um, from the lenses of, uh, you know, a Jewish organization made sense. Um, and of course, you know, now Kim's the executive director of Unplug Collaborative and Little Space, and they, you know, and has taken charge of it in this extraordinary way. But um, it, we just wanted to talk about the origins, as we are a Jewish school, um, that this concept of um, sundown to sundown certainly makes sense to us. Um, and uh, we were just so thrilled to be able to partner with Kim because who doesn't want to partner with her? Um, she's extraordinary at what she does. And uh, we were just so lucky to be like a pilot that was uh, doing this. So Shabbat Fa'ina Fash, why? This was intended to be our new weekly launch for pre-Sabbath programming at Milken. March 6, we were gonna do it every Friday. This is part of our culture to set the stage for Shabbat, where we unplug from the quotidien the every day and have a day dedicated to restoring the soul, our health, and separating from the unhealthy things we do in a week, like too much digital. This is an important tool for our students to have and for us as professionals and humans too. And we use the tagline, restore yourself, restore someone else, because they were, were about to get into what they did for the National Day of Unplugging. And the idea was, as Kim explained, by using the app um, and unplugging those minutes translated to um, you know, a social impact for an organization. So the idea of restore yourself and restoring someone else uh, really worked for us. Um, so I'm going to turn it over to the two students who, it, Yozma just means initiative in Hebrew. I'll just share that with you. It's a social action leadership um, at Milken. It's not the only way we do service learning, but it's a deep dive. We have about 90 students. They're in 10 different groups. Um, the ones that you could imagine, um, children, um, elderly, hunger, uh, UNDP, and, and more, and Healing Spirits, self-named by students, um, is the group that took charge of National Day of Unplugging. They do all kinds of acts of kindness. They uh, are focused on wellness. And so they're going to just kind of take you through some photos and things of what we did last year. And that is Sabrina and Talia, who are the co-chairs. Um, both graduating seniors. So I'm gonna turn it over to you guys and I'll flip through these slides as you speak. Unmute. Sabrina, Talia. Talia's supposed to speak, but I can't. If she, do you want me to talk Talia? Yeah, go ahead. 
Okay, hi, my name is Serena Apsta. As Ms. Cameron's introduced, I am a senior this year, and that is my third year on Yesma. So, as you can see, these are co chairs from last year, and we're putting up posters. So, if you go to the next few slides, basically, we had QR codes, and you have this institute at our school where you can print posters. So, we did that, and we put them on the windows, and you'd scan it. And it was, a, uh, we have this programming at our school, and it's called ONEG, and it's a 50 minute block where it's asynchronous. There's no classes, there's like nothing. It's a free time where you can just hang out and it's not purely like recreational, there's no academics. So we utilize this time to market our event. Um, hi, my name is Talia. It's also my third year at Yozma. And the cause that we unplugged for was called Knock Knock Give a Sock. And we collected socks for homeless individuals and families in LA. And for every minute unplugged, a corporate partner donated one pair of socks for a homeless person at a local shelter. And um, we had 60 minutes, which equals 60 pair of socks times um, 100 students. Um, and that equaled 6,000 socks donated to Hope of the Valley Rescue Mission. Right. Um, so some activities that we did included arm wrestling, coloring books, board games, yoga, cupcake decorating, step and repeat photos, and music. Hi, I'm Isabella Nasir. I have been in Yozma for four years. It's my fourth year now. And this is me and my co-chair at the, at the check-in table. This is where we basically helped students nav navigate the app and we gave them a sleeping bag for their phone. The sleeping bag was basically a ticket to take part in activities in order to motivate unplugging. Continuing with what Talia said, here is the amphitheater of our school. It's the most central part where all the grades flow in and we have different activities scattered around. We have board games on the next slide. We have cupcake decorating where our group members helped delegate and give out cupcakes you can see in the pictures. And it was a really nice time because there's an involvement of both faculty and students. And it really it like really stressed the importance of in-person and just like very much recreational. It wasn't like structured. You weren't like forced to do anything. It was very much on your own will. And it was really just cathartic, relaxing, a good break from the day. Cause it was the middle of the day. We still have classes after this. And here we can see people stating why they chose to unplug or what they're unplugging for. So what motivates you to do what you do and take the time for yourself. Um, so some takeaways that I had during this event was that I was able to establish some or I was able to establish physical relationships and interactions with my peers. And um, we plan to launch this event every Friday at Milken um, during Shabbat, but the pandemic happened one year after one week after the event. Yeah, and looking back, this is March 6th of last year. So it's very, like, like looking at these pictures, it's very bittersweet. I'm looking, it's like one of the last few times I was with my peers in person. We did such an important event and it really like has a special place in my heart. And looking back, there's so many things I take from this, like setting a time to like be off my phone, having like limited screen time. Like I tried to do an hour or less on my phone or like um, going back of what Emma said, just like uh, reducing the time you're on social media outside of school, so. And um, so we're also going to transition. Um, so that was all about disconnecting, but we um, also connect digitally for the good, right? And Kim alluded to that as well. So Shannon Rad is um, a chair of the Yozma Israel group, and she's going to show you what they did in terms of connecting digitally for the good. Shannon? Hi, so I'm Shannon. Like Ms. Cameron said, um, I'm from Yozma Israel. And this year, because of the pandemic, we shifted our efforts from our usual um, fundraising and we created an Instagram account and our goal in general both offline and online is to raise awareness about current events in Israel to educate our peers and other individuals and to support Jewish and Israeli organizations and non nonprofits and an example of that is the Jewish National Fund and um, they plant trees in Israel and so because of the pandemic, we weren't able to host our in-person events and we created an Instagram account instead to kind of share that information. And we've been able to reach a lot of people through sharing. Um, we mainly do Instagram stories where we in make interactive stories for our followers to contribute in. 
And on the next slide, you can see how the different highlights we have. So we have one where we post about peace with Israel. So um, recently there have been a lot of peace treaties with other countries in the Middle East. We have a story for COVID-19 updates in Israel, different news, um, and then remembrance for different important figures. Um, and then action. So for example, like I talked about, we had, we are currently contributing to the JNF and under that action, we would have our different organizations that we help. And Tushwa and Hanukkah are two different, the past, our most recent Jewish holidays that we've been posting about and Shabbat is the weekly celebration on Friday where we kind of unplug and Chala is just the um, kind of cultural aspect of Judaism and on Shabbat, you have challah. So it's just like different recipes and trying to engage our members in all the different aspects of Israel. That is my favorite part of the Instagram is getting challah recipes. Um, so we're just gonna conclude that, you know, um, we go forward, March 5th, 6th, 2021. We can all colleagues mark our calendars. You know, Milken's going forward, Zoom, hybrid, in-person. Um, whatever the county says, um, you know, we always say social action doesn't take a break. It doesn't take a summer break, not a winter break, and certainly um, not a pandemic break. Um, so these are just some of the activities that are being planned, but the rest is going to be planned by our students. And uh, we're really looking forward to it. We're really proud of them. And this group especially will be sort of the lead and all kinds of students will lead different Zoom rooms or in-person activities, however it works out. So we're super excited because that's in the planning. And we just wanna thank um, ECSL, Donna, Marissa, what an honor. Thank you to our students who presented um, and our colleagues. Thanks for uh, letting us share with you. And we hope it inspires more conversation and when we learn from each other right now in our breakouts. Yeah, thanks, Carolyn. We're gonna, we are gonna um, have more conversation about it. We will head to our breakout rooms. Now we'll have about 20 minutes or so um, to share in that space. And um, I'm really excited too that we just heard also what, not just what um, the sparks are, with the different initiatives, but also a little bit about logistically, like how, how do you make it happen on campus? So it was really great to hear that piece of, of how does it unfold um, with students on your campus setting. So thank you for, for adding that piece. Um, and so we'll have, um, when you head to your breakout room, please take a minute to pull up the shared document, um, which I'm putting here in the chat. And um, when you're there, you can populate the document with your names and email addresses and have a scribe to take notes on the types of things that we're sharing today so that we can all go back to it um, go, moving forward on your own time to kind of process it in a new way. Um, and when, then we'll come meet back in this space and uh, close out our time together with uh, seeing where you're headed next. So um, if you give me a moment, I'm going to open all the rooms and I'll give you um, about a minute warning uh, when we are about to head out um, and come back together to this main session, I'll remain in the session in case anybody needs um, to be swapped in case you were placed in the wrong spot. So we look forward to seeing you on the other side of our of our conversations. Um, Marissa, give a little yeah. um, heads up for the second question. So divide the time in about two. Sure, two, two, sure, two, yeah. So you'll questions. see on the shared document that we have um, given you um, some key points and some questions to consider. Um, when you're in that space, um, when it's your turn to share, you can reflect on those questions, um, and they're they're there on the on the breakout room document, and we're shared um, when we sent you um, the registration information. So um, I will let you know when it's time to think about um, switching over to other questions. See you soon. Hello. Welcome back, everybody. Um, it, it's always interesting to be on the other side and to see how the conversations are unfolding on the shared document. Um, when, when you have a chance, you can go back and look over some of those resources that we have <clears throat> shared there. Um, when, we, when we talked today, we kind of looked at a few different aspects of digital wellness and how some of it is what you do when you disconnect and how, you're, how you use your time disconnecting. And I, another thank you to Kim Cavallo and Emma Lemke, I want to say your name properly, Emma. Can you repeat for me? Lemke. Lemke. Um, and so thank you for, for sharing some ideas on what it 
looks like to use disconnecting as an initiative and how you spend your time when you're disconnecting. And then there's also the avenue of what you do for digital wellness when you are connecting, when you are online. And so in that space, um, here one of the one of the work hazards of working at home. <laughs> um, so uh, when we are connecting, you know, how are we doing that in in a healthy way? And so we've shared some resources there um, that might be helpful to you. Um, there are some things from Common Sense Media. Um, Kathy Kay, who's on our call today, has shared some ideas for books um, and. We've also put some things on there, um, an, an organization, we have some re representatives today from Treatum who offer a digital platform to kind of help you organize, support your, um, your civic action um, within your schools. So thanks for being here today. Um, so please check that out if you have a moment. So we have tons of resources there to just um, take you to your next steps. And that's how we wanted to end um, our time today, um, thinking about where you will go from here and we invite you to put in the chat a sentence or two about what you're thinking of next and where you might go next um, now that we've had this opportunity to uh to explore those intersections of digital wellness and service learning so please take a, a quiet moment to share we're gonna, we're, we'll do a one two three mm -hmm. and then so write out what's one idea that you be that you either coming away with today or that you weren't aware of and you've gathered. We're gonna do one, two, three, and then we'll all post together. So we'll give you just a few minutes to, to get your thought together because there was a lot, a lot of fuel for thought today. And then we'll do, Marissa, you can do a one, two, three and we'll post. Great. <clears throat> Okay, three, two, one, you may share. You can take a minute to read what some of your colleagues will be up to from here. Getting outside, taking walks as an opportunity to disconnect, prioritizing, making time for nothing and being present recruiting students who might want to do day of unplugging and even trying unplugging for faculty, not just mm. amongst students, but amongst your colleagues. Taking some of the ideas of the hierarchy of digital consumption and using that. Planning things in technology class. These are all great applications. And um, as we as we go today, please also consider how we can support each other as a step forward. Um, revisit the shared doc, please reach out to us or reach out to those who you are in a breakout room with that may have um, some essential ideas that can help you move forward. If you need help connecting with someone, um, that's part of what um, we're charged to do at ECSL is to help you uh, connect with someone that might help you move forward. So thank you so much for being in this space today. We usually save some open-ended Q&A um, for the next 10 or 15 minutes, if anybody wants to continue the dialogue. And if not, then we will see you again. I want to um, say one thing too, because Kathy's with us. Yep. Um, did you have anything, uh, CBK, that you wanted to contribute or add or say or bookend? Uh, yeah, I, I, first of all, I want to again, commend all the speakers, especially the adults, but especially the students, because I think it's real important um, what you said and, and how I mean, just earnest and um, honest and thoughtful and what you've done and what you've created. I think that's really wonderful. Um, I think one of the convers just a quick thing is that at school, students are still overloaded with work and tests and exams. And um, we were talking about that at the end of our conversation. I think that's something we all really need to take a look at at our schools is I think this is a year when mental health and well-being should take priority over exams. And I think um, this is something that yeah, I see a couple of smiles from some young people. Um, so I think that's a real important uh, conversation to have at school like now, not wait till June to have it. I mean, this this semester, especially for our graduating seniors, should be one where they're they're being celebrated and not being strained and stressed out. So that was something that we talked about. Um, and also just extending into our communities and making our neighborhoods better and getting offline and doing good where we can see it. So those are some ideas.
Okay, well, we, we thank you. We thank you for that. And um, as Marissa said, uh, again, thanks to, thanks to everybody so much for contributing the thoughts and being present here 